Okay. Well, good morning. First of all, I want to apologize uh, for the delay. We have had a large volume of uh, that's been using the new website, and we didn't uh, have the processing power that we needed. So they are working on that, and it should be ready to go uh, later this afternoon. So we'll go ahead and start with an update on the numbers. We had 189 new positive cases today for a total of 1,899 positive cases. We had no new counties, so we stand at 82 total counties in the state. We have 481 negative cases today for a total of 17,467 negative tests. The State Hygienic Lab has 3,415 tests available. We had 163 hospitalized as of last evening. 790 Iowans have recovered for a recovery rate of 42 percent. And I'm very sorry to report that we have had an, uh, six additional deaths for a total of 49 deaths um, in the state of Iowa. So today's positive case count is the highest that we've seen, and I want to explain a little bit of why that number is so high. As we, as you're aware of, Tyson, a Tyson plant in Louisa County has experienced an outbreak of COVID-19 among its employees. And public health has been working closely with management at the plant to test their staff. Yesterday, the state hygienic lab confirmed an additional 86 positive cases related to the outbreak at the facility. So of today's total 189 positive cases, 86 of those are, relate, are related to the Tyson outbreak. Um, the Department of Public Health has also confirmed that we have three additional outbreaks in long-term care facilities. Bartlett Bartels in uh, Lutheran Retirement Home in Bremer County, Trinity Center at Lutheran Park in Polk County, and On With Life, a residential facility located in Polk County. The Department of Public Health and the local public health officials are working with the management and staff at the facilities to ensure that all steps are being taken to make sure that we isolate six, sick residents, assign dedicated staff members to provide their care, and monitor all other residents. On the day that um, I announced Iowa's first positive COVID-19 cases, I pledged to keep Iowans informed and to be as transparent as possible. I began providing daily updates of confirmed cases by age group and county and later provided the same information for deaths. Then, as new information became available over the course of the last several weeks, we have continued to expand the updates to include additional information such as the number of Iowans who are hospitalized, those who have recovered, and our overall recovery rate. Last week, I reported new information from Iowa's six RMCC regions about hospitalizations, bed capacity, ICU availability, and vent availability as well. And this was all done to facilitate cr critical information sharing and coordinating healthcare resources within a region or across the state during this crisis. Our goal from the beginning has been to provide Iowans with the information that they need so that they can understand the current situation and, and what it means for them. So today I'm pleased to share that we're making more information uh, m available and more accessible with the launch of a new dashboard on our website, coronavirus.iowa.gov. The dashboard includes the numbers that I report in my press conference each day and more, such as the total number of people tested and recovered in each county, the total positive cases by county and age group, the COVID-19 assessment levels for each region, and Iowa's epidemiologic curve. Dr. Padati is joining me today to give you an overview of the epi curve. But first, I want to give you a quick tour of the dashboard and the information that you'll find there. So, um, and the dashboard will be available later today on the homepage, again, of coronavirus.iowa.gov. Um, Just scroll down until you see it. So the first page of the dashboard shows current status, where you'll see the statewide totals for confirmed cases, deaths, people tested, and cases recovered. You can hover over any county on the map to see the county name, the number of confirmed cases, and the number of deaths. If you click on the county, you'll see even more information, including the number of people tested and recovered in that county. You can also 
um, access some of the same information in tables so that you can see more results at once, including cases and deaths by county and cases by county and age. Lab testing provides the number of individuals tested and the test results for each day. So again, if you hover or click on any bar on the graph to see the number of positive test results in red and the negative test re uh, results in gray. The demographics tab provides additional information about the Iowans who have tested positive for COVID-19, including gender, age group, race, and ethnicity. The long-term care dashboard identifies the facilities with confirmed COVID-19 outbreaks and includes the number of positive cases among both residents and staff of those facilities. The RMCC dashboard provides the information about hospitalization and resources um, that we've been sharing since last week. The information you see at first is a daily roll-up of all regions, but you can click on any region to see its data for the day. And finally, we have also included the regional assessment map showing which level each county currently ranks. And now I'd like uh, Dr. Badati to share the epi curve and provide an overview of what it tells us about the current status. Thank you, Governor Reynolds. So when we think again about epidemiology overall, what we're talking about are the trends or patterns in health and disease in a given population. And the way that we orient epidemiologic data is always by person, place, and time. And so you've seen in the information that the governor shared how we describe the people, the cases who are affected by this illness, things like age, category, gender, and race. You've also seen how we describe the geographic location or the place of where we're seeing cases, looking at the county levels. So the last element in understanding the patterns of an illness in a population is time. And so often you'll hear us talk about an epidemic or epi curve. And this is one example of the way that we orient data to understand the progression of an outbreak or illnesses in a population. So what you can see is an example of an epi curve, and this is using the date of illness onset for individuals who became ill, who then were contacted by public health and provided information about when their symptoms first appeared. Now, using something like an epi curve is really helpful because it helps orient data over time, so you'll see case counts as well as the date on this curve. And then it also helps us understand things like the magnitude of the number of people affected and the progression of an outbreak. And this gets back to the idea that we've heard about many times related to the desire to flatten a curve. So for example, what we want to avoid is seeing a curve that looks too much like a mountain peak, which would suggest that a lot of people are getting ill at the same time, and that has the potential to overwhelm our healthcare resources. And so that's why all the while we're looking at patterns in time, the number of cases that we see, as well as looking at our resource availability on the RMCC dashboard that you saw to help us understand where the capacity exists to help address needs as they should arise. So again, when we think about wanting to flatten the curve, it has to do with the idea of too many people wanting to get on a train at the same time. If we try and put too many people into the same train car, we overwhelm that system. But if we can stagger the use of that train car and avoid rush hours, then we can manage that in a better way and optimize care for the people who really need it. That's what we're doing by encouraging the use of these public health mitigation and social distancing strategies. That's why we urge everybody to stay home as much as possible. And we follow this information every day in things like the epi curve. Thank you, Dr. Padati, and I want to again express my gratitude to you and your team for your leadership and expertise throughout the last several weeks. The effort that you have put forth in your team is remarkable, and I was very fortunate to have uh, the team that we do. I also, uh, again, want to thank our local public health officials in each of our counties. The role is so important, their role to understanding uh, the situation in communities and protecting the health of Iowans. So please know how much you are appreciated as well.